two. Welcome to Love Live with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Would you sleep with sick women? I may be pregnant, but I'm still a man. Spank the unruly ones. It's indecent, it's vulgar, it's blasphemous. I'm gonna ride you till you can't stand up. Come on, come on, let's go down. All right, all right, keep your shirt on. Love Line's meant for an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Here's Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. All right, let me uh, let me start by giving a shout out to my homie uh, John Frost, who is uh, the best in the business, who is a genius, who puts together all those uh, intros, outros, yeah, bumpers, that's, yeah, bumpers, yeah. yeah, that's what those are called. Right. What the hell is he saying? Uh, what I'm saying is, is this: uh, you hear the show every couple of months, they turn over, and those are little that uh, minute and a half worth of intro, and then the things we do going into commercials and uh, so on and so forth. Yeah. John Frost does those, yep. and he is the best in the business. Yep. He's a, a great guy. He's a little sick, but he's a good guy. And I guess you got to be a little twisted to be a talented artist these days. And uh, the rest of the country, and uh, including uh, this great uh, city of ours, Los Angeles, basically just rip him off. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. If although you, you turned other stations, I, I you'd think John Frost did a drop. I've actually been at radio a long time, as you know. <laughs> you would never know yeah, it I by know. the way you conduct yes, yourself in here. Medicine a longer time, so that's that's why. All right, so um, balanced out. But uh, there was kind of a sound like John's before John. John just perfected it. So okay. All right. Take a dump on John. No, no. John's the best. John's he's the best. I mean, he's this close to suicide as is it is. So. He is the right. best. But it's not really people ripping him off. People just wishing to be as good as him. Right. Hey, uh, imitation is a zero's form of flat. There you go. It's an homage uh, slash rip off. All right. The uh, <laughs> 1-800-LOVE-191 is the phone number. 310-854-4455 4455 is the fax number. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. And tonight's guest is the love that we find between the two hosts. Have we done this for a while? In, in a while? It, it seems like we haven't. And you know, I mean, you know, although, you know how I always say I hate guests? Yeah. Because they get in the way? Yeah. I'm starting to change. Well, we've had some really good guests yes. lately. Yes. And, uh, I mean, uh, Soul Coughing's great. They're soul Coughing uh, was great. Uh, the Verve Pipe. Oh, yeah. Was great. And, and, uh, I know I'm leaving people out, but. The point is, is uh, think about our last ten guests. They've all been great. The the people from the condom board and How about all think, that stuff. Yeah, that that was. By the way, we got to thank our producer for setting that all up. That we was do excellent. Will you please? Beautiful, Ann. Thank you. I mean, she she's a producer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and by the way, yeah. it, I've been kind of strange last three or four shows. You notice that? Right. We actually got. I saw some emails come through. I said, Drew, you know, get some rest, uh, leave no. the time for Love Line, that sort of thing. Let me tell you something, though, Drew. Here's the beauty of you. Yeah. Not important. <laughs> you could really come in here with a tumor and it'd be fine. Gee, it hurts when I urinate. I've got these lesions. You're uh, not a hundred percent, but uh, I've not been. I feel much better tonight. I got to tell you, I don't know what was going on. With you me. at forty percent is uh, better than most at a hundred. But you're I like think uh, that was a compliment, man, for yeah. both of us. You know, inside of a all in the same minute, it's amazing. You are like the uh, monkey on a side hack, Drew. Uh, you're there for weight. <laughs> side hack. All right, I'll get into that All right. later. All right, let me read some uh, email before we get rolling here. Um, this is from uh, Dustin. Uh, Adam, I think you look like Gilbert Godfrey. No offense, but it's true. Let's, let's get that over with. I, I let's tell get, you, know how you, we, you... Wait, you know how we're going to get that over with? Hmm. We have to have Gilbert Godfrey on the TV show. Amazing. We have to do that. Well, maybe I'll go do his show. Uh, let me think what that is. I have hung out with Gilbert I Godfrey. Know, I know he have. is an impish, I know, that's uh, little gotta... nebbish. He is four feet tall. That's why we've got to get them on. He's Game a funny on. guy. He's a nice guy. He's really, he has the mentality of a homeless person. Mm. He really does. He wears the same, I, I swear to you, I've seen Gilbert Godfrey three days in a row. He always wears the same pants. Yeah. He's a strange, and he would tell you this. He's a quirky little, uh, uh, un, unkempt, uh, he, he needs to shower. Oh, Please. At this point, I'm longing for the uh, Greg Brady comparisons. I never knew it would get this bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, another piece of email from uh, Pranami. Maybe I just get your teeth fixed or something. Maybe that's the deal. No, it's the way I talk. And then because I squint my eyes, I think, in the right. nappy hair, I, I'll never get past it. All right. So here's a uh, piece of email. I'm so, this is, uh, goes out to Dr. Drew. I'm so disappointed in you, uh, Dr. Drew. Oh I have heard quite a few uh, women call in about chronic urinary tract infections after sex. Now, I'm going to defend Drew here, and it's not necessarily after sex, but it is uh, chronic urinary tract infections. 
Meaning they don't always say, hey, after sex, this is what happens. Right. But it does come up quite a bit. Uh, and you've discussed numerous antibiotic, uh, sorry, antibiotics. However, you have never once mentioned the simple cure-all to this problem that every woman should know, which is uh, pee immediately after sex. Yeah, they, believe me, these, I, I remember several not of these a, calls. Not a penny in it for Dr. Drew. No, but listen. Until look, they put a meter the, on that spigot, Adam, there's Adam, not a penny Adam, for Drew and question. the drug companies whose pocket he is uh, firmly entrenched in. Believe me, by the time, every single one of these women I've spoken to have been to multiple physicians for multiple treatments, and believe me, the first thing everyone always does is that. It's, it's way later down the line we're talking about here. These are people with medical problems. Urinary urine tract infections that recur in spite of re repeated episodes of treatment uh, are not going to get better right. just by peeing after sex. Plus, I would argue that half our listeners actually urinate during sex. Yeah, probably. So uh, this is not a viable alternative. I speak from experience, it goes on to say. Uh, it'll work every time. No. Uh, do not roll over and go to sleep. Do not smoke a cigarette. Go pee! Everyone's a that doctor. That will take a lot of fluids. Take cranberry juice will help. But for people that really have this problem, it is intractable oftentimes. And a actually, the thing that I have found changes thing most is change of position. Really? really? People can actually change the way they have sex. That, that changes it a little bit. Let me say this, Drew. There are certain times one has to urinate. And, and um, after sex, always. Guys are stimulated. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the prostate irritated. or whatever, yeah, whatever it is. Look, if I said irritated, you'd say stimulated, so we'll just leave it at that. But the point is this. You do have to pee after sex, and I think there's a reason uh, that was sort of instilled uh -huh. when, uh, when they were making the body. Yeah. And I don't know if women have that same thing. Do well, they? women, as you mentioned last night, uh, God kind of gave up on that. Mm. Along, remember? Right. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's right. He started work on the vagina. He said, ah, it was originally going to be a penis. And he said, ah, screw it, I'm tired. That's good enough. Work in progress. Uh... Here's one from uh, Jonathan in reference to the condom garter. This is something I've spoken about on more than one occasion. It's the uh, piece of elastic with the two alligator clips on either end that hooks around and hooks around the uh, buns and uh, hooks onto the condom there. Uh, anyway, condom garter uh, postulations exposed on the show. Wow. One of our intelligent listeners. I bring news of, an, uh, of a device of this nature. It's called the loop. It's an integrated condom latex loop that lassoes the nards. Not only does it hold on the device, but it apparently adds some other dimension to the condom use. You'd think there'd be some kind of condom adhesive, too. Yeah, there really would. Condom uh, adhesive. Yeah. Condom adhesive, something like that. <laughs> okay, Drew, I'm going to deduct the joke from the uh, Drew joke meter for right, that one. You. Yeah, some uh, some form of mastic you put something. on with a notch trial before you uh, slide the they, condom they, over it. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. I'll get to activate this email on the later. base or something. Okay. It'll strip you pull off or something. Let's stop ruminating. Huh. No, wait a minute. That is that is yeah. a good idea. Yeah. They have that for like diapers and stuff. Yes, absolutely. You know, okay, we, the, all right. It has to be. Drew's come up with something. Uh, just a piece of double stick tape. It, one of those Very things where you just peel it off and right, you stick it right there. Right. Non-allergenic, real mild, and. Uh, right. Why don't they do that? I don't know. I'm, I would even accept just a hook that you could braid your pubic hair through. That would be certainly be worth something. Drew, uh, really, you, you say you live in a world where everything has been invented and everything's been done? Ah, I say nay. Tonight we did it. Tonight we've done it. All right. Let me tell you something. I come up with inventions all week long. Drew barely uh, raises an eyebrow. He comes up with uh, putting a little uh, mastic at the end of a condom, and he, he's uh, patting himself on the back to no end. Andy, 18, you're on Love Line. Yeah, uh, well, today I got a big problem here. Today I was uh, having sex with my girlfriend, and, uh, well, my condom broke. Mm. And I, this was probably at about 7, <laughs> and I'm still up, and it's about 12.05 here in Minnesota. Uh, this is this is 7 a.m.? No. no. This no, happened five no. hours ago, you mean? 7 at night, yeah. And you're freaked out about it. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, here's what you do, Andy. <laughs> Andy, here's what you do. It's 12, and he's still up, Drew. You, you're freaked out because you might get the girl pregnant. Is that what's freaking you out? You're, yeah. You're not, you're not, well, hang on. You could be freaked out about potential STD exposure or something. Yeah, it, it more worries me, the pregnancy part. Right, what you do first thing in the morning, this happened this evening? Yeah. If you, if you can go out, and it's a little late tonight, but first thing in the morning, you get yourself either to a family planning, Planned Parenthood, emergency room, or doctor's office, and there is something called post-coital contraceptive, morning-after pill. 
there's a pill called Overal or Low Overal that your girlfriend can take for three days that will substantially reduce the risk of this turning into a pregnancy. Okay. You got me? Yeah. It's got to be tomorrow. You have, a small, you have a small window of opportunity with which to do this. I would think most Planned Parenthoods would give you free access to this stuff, but I don't know. Uh, if you have a family doctor, talk to them. Uh, this is something widely accepted, but limited discussion about Oh, this. God, is it limited. That is the most retarded. All right, do you hear us, Andy? Yeah. So, so uh, although even, even the, the, the chance of pregnancy is not obviously not 100%, but uh, while the oral contraceptive pill taken as a contraceptive prophylactically is about 100% effective, it's about 70 to 80% effective right, as a morning right, after true, pill. True, true. Nobody understood anything I said, yeah, right? Absolutely right. not. If you you take, don't even know what you're talking about It's 100% effective at this point. To preventing pregnancy if you take it the way it's designed to be taken. It's about 70 to 80% taken as a morning after pill. Listen. Let's not talk about uh, efficacy here. Haul your ass down to Planned Parenthood tomorrow morning uh, with your potentially knocked-up girlfriend and uh, potentially uh, shotgun-wedded future wife and <laughs> go get this uh, low overall. Okay? Yeah. yeah you understand? Have to, uh, All you're right. You're going to get some sleep. You should be able to go to sleep now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All yeah. right. All right. Listen. People... I've really never, first off, I've never heard this discussed on any other show but ours. Yeah. This is not out there in a, in a, in a, in a society where, uh, oh, yeah, people know about how uh, strangulation uh, can uh, help you out sexually. Yes, and people know about, uh, oh, yeah, you pop uh, some amyl nitrate right before you orgasm. And people know everything. The average 15-year-old uh, knows more about sex than uh, I, I did at 25. But the point is this. Nobody is talking about this. Nobody is saying that, hey, if you screw up, you no longer have to just sit around and wait and keep your fingers crossed. You can go down to Planned Parenthood or go down to your doctor, get a couple of pills, take them for a few days, and, and drastically reduce... The chances of the yep. pregnancy. What the hell is wrong with this society, Drew? Why isn't this at the? F why isn't I don't know. everybody talking about this? I can this? only imagine that it has something to do. There, there are some philosophical, ethical issues. Of course. And Which yes, uh, we'll uh, call you know, them religious, religious well, it issues. It is that certainly these morning after pills don't prevent con uh, conception. The, 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 the fertilization can still take place. Right. The egg just can't implant. Right. And technically, it's a human, even though well, it's you a, know, a lot uh, of five cells and some grape jelly. Interestingly, yes. uh, people, even a lot of, some at least, uh, pro-life uh, uh, people, will look at implantation as beginning of life. So it, it, even for people that have a problem with abortions, this should be okay for a lot of them. That's not implantation? It, this prevents implantation. Oh, it does. Yeah, right. So, so even even the people who who dislike abortion should find this an acceptable alternative. This is uh, this is the ra this is the sperm roundup, is what it is. Yeah. This is not an abortion. Yeah. This Basically. is a, this is a, you're running sperm. It's yeah. <laughs> whatever whatever you said. Yeah, move on. Yeah. All right. Well, bivouac here tonight. All right, Drew. You ever run sperm? No. Okay. You're not a sperm wrestler. No. I have a brand sperm. No. All right, little doggy. Ash, 16, you're on Loveline. Hi. Hey. <laughs> um, I had a question, a love question. No. Um, I guess it was about um, January, December and January. I was going out with this guy. I was going out with him for like a month, and I lost my virginity, virginity to him, and he got recruited into the Army. Hmm. And Hold on. Uh, How old was he? he was, he's 17. He got recruited into the Army. Yeah, he got his GED. All right. Yeah. All right. I know everyone hates it when translate, I say this. Translate that for me. He, he had nothing going on. And uh, he was walking down the street, and some guy came up to him and, uh, you know, with the back of his neck shaved and uh, standing at attention and a spit, spit polish on his shoes and said, uh, Boy, you want a life for yourself. Why don't you cut that hair? Stop listening to that grudge rock. Them smashing dumplings and the nervosa. And get in here and earn yourself some pride. So he got suckered in there because that's what you do. You go to the army when you got nothing going on. Uh, people think I'm very anti-patriotic uh, when I say that, and they get all upset. But listen, let's face it. We know the people that went out of high school into into the army. It's the people that couldn't get into college, possibly even junior college. Okay, but my, that wasn't my question. <laughs> my question was that um, before he left, like a couple weeks, he was like 
like really just being secluded. He didn't want to see me or, around or anything. Hmm. And I just like didn't know if it was like because he didn't want me waiting for him to come back or if it's just he didn't love me anymore. You know, I, and, and I know I am often very tough on the emotional lives of men. But let me come to this guy's defense here. And maybe he was a good guy. And maybe he was having difficulty leaving you. And this was just his way of dealing with it. He had to disconnect emotionally from you in order to manage the fact that he was going away. Uh-huh. I mean, and, it, and indeed, he was looking after your best interest, too, because he didn't want you to pine over him, knowing that he would just be not available. He might have been a good guy. Yeah. I mean, it might not be that he dumped you or didn't like you or used you. It might be that he just, that life circumstances stepped in. And, uh, well, I've never defended a man quite so no, definitively, this you really haven't, but, and you're but, really going down the wrong road here oh. because this this guy's 17 <laughs> with a GED who got suckered into the army. He's uh, this right, is so not uh, Sir Walter Raleigh over here. Do you understand? Yeah. He is. Uh, this is not chivalry. He's just uh, he's giving you the shiv. It is the shiv without the chivalry. We can't know which it is without speaking to him. All but, right. But the important thing for you, Ash, is to, is to get over it. And yes, you're 16. Deal with it. There, you're plenty desirable, I can uh, tell by the lovely tone of your voice. And uh, this guy's going far away to have sex with uh, Asian women, what you so can, you want to stay. What you can learn from this is that when you ha- get physically intimate, you get emotionally intimate. And there's a lot that goes with that. And uh, be respectful of, your, of these feelings and what are likely to come with physical intimacies in your relationships in the future. All right. John, 25. A bit more rested tonight, suddenly. Hello? Yeah, you've softened up. Hello? Hey. I'm on the air. Now, I'm going to hang up on you. That's how you'll know. Okay. Um, doc, this question is for Dr. Drew. I'm a long-time listener, and um, Adam, I think you're hilarious. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, you, you, you bought yourself five minutes, John. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, about, oh, boy, about six years ago, I was diagnosed with OCD, obsessive-compulsive yeah. disorder. Yeah. And um, I went on medication about two years ago. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, it's Zoloft, and I'm wondering what... Uh, some of the long-term effects are of that. None that we know of. That it appears that when you get off that drug, there are no lasting ill effect, and that if it's taken for a mood disturbance, there is a beneficial effect that sometimes the mood instabilities stabilize after you come off the medicine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. That, that if you're depressed, you, you, you're on the medicine, you feel better. And for some reason, the body will sort of sustain that even when you come off the medicines. Well, maybe. Do now, you get used to being sane? Now, now, the question is, what if you're on it for years and years? What are the long-term effects? And the answer is we really don't know because these drugs haven't been around that long. Uh, no one's made it past 30. Uh, the <laughs> the fa- no. you know, obsessive compulsive disorder does respond very well to the serotonin reuptake inhibitor drugs like Zoloft and Paxil and Prozac. Yeah, uh, I just, you know... And uh, last, I know I'm on a short budget, but uh, you're right; it does work. It's worked yeah. wonders. Yeah. And uh, how we, just so I, people hey, can understand what this disorder is, how did it manifest? I with you? was about to ask that. Wow, we, we Drew, are, you are, are involved with the show. Yeah. Hey, let's all give a big uh, round of applause to Dr. Drew, who's gotten involved <laughs> in the awake, show. Awake. Hey, it took him till Wednesday, but uh, you know the, the Sunday night change thing. Yeah, it's not working for me. Yeah, I got to tell you, it just made. I'm shocked at how different right. it made. For me, me, it's the Santa Anas. Uh, <laughs> when they start blowing, I can no longer function. Yeah, it's, it's weird how much it yeah. affected me. And the ambient lighting. And right, yeah, okay. yeah, and this clock over here is a big distraction. John. Yeah. How did it manifest? Oh, um, I was under a lot of stress just getting out of college, mm-hmm. and um, basically it was a uh, hand washing germs. How many times a day were you washing? Oh Jesus. Every time I touch something, I'd wash. What other stuff do you do besides? Hand I'm washing? sorry. What other stuff do you do besides hand washing? Uh, just checking, make sure I wasn't. Uh, sometimes, uh, to make sure the stove was off. Right. Uh, Would you like go to work and then drive all the way home because you convinced you didn't uh, close yeah. the stove? Oh, and uh, and let me tell you something. It's you know. There hasn't been a lot on this about the media or nothing, but I tell you, if anyone out there is listening and they're having these symptoms, you know, God forbid, there's help out there for people. Yeah, it, and th- There's a psychological basis very often to why people become obsessively preoccupied, but it's a biological event, and it can be treated with medication. And when it's, when it's full-blown like that, where you, have, you can't walk on the cracks of the sidewalk and you have intrusive thoughts and you're always concerned that something horrible is going to happen to you if you don't uh, you know, turn the light switch on and off ten times or leave the TV on a certain channel when you turn it off. That's serious stuff. It needs to be treated. You know, I believe I have many of the same afflictions our listeners have, such as uh, I do believe I have uh, obsessive-compulsive disorder. It's just, let me tell you, uh, laziness, lethargy is the great equalizer. 
You, you know, know what I mean? Yeah. I sit on the sofa and I go, nah, maybe I'll get up and wash my hands. And then I go, nah, I'm going to relax. It's, a, it's, it's like my balance between being cheap and loving pornography. I would have a, uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of pornography. But the problem is, is I'm too cheap to buy it, yet I love it. It keeps me in check. I see. I have to wait for, for it to fall off of trucks and, yeah. and people to throw it out, you yeah, know, on trash that's, day. That's why I was rooting through the trash cans. It's, it's a biological system. They tend to buy, balance themselves. They do. I, I swear to you. I think that my, you know, I mean, I'll be lying in bed and I'll go, I wonder if I left the oven on. And then I go, eh, eh screw it. I'm going to bed. It, it really balances out. I, I'm telling you, I'll let people ought to try more napping. Uh, you know, the way it really you, balances you out. The way you masturbate, it's people, I'm sure, are shocked that you are compulsive about anything. I began to float up and away from my body. Uh, lady, you better get back float. here. If you're not here when Love Line float. returns, they're going to be pissed. Float. Hi, this is Charlene Steve from Garbage, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hi. This huh? Wait a minute. I thought her name was Shirley. Did she call herself Charlene? Shirley. Shirley. Oh, really? Let's hear it again. Hi, this is Charlene Steve from Garbage, and Charlie, you're listening to Love Charlie Line Steve with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Charlie Steve. What's her name? I, I don't Shirley. Know. Is it Shirley Hempel? Who is that? Shirley, what? Shirley and Steve. Oh, Shirley. Oh, God. Oh, no wonder these people drink so much. You don't can understand what the hell they're saying. I thought this was Charlene. All right. I don't want to bag on the garbage because they were, good. They were really yeah, good guests. They were excellent guests. Uh, people from other countries don't have the same attitude. All right. Except from mainland England. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. England and New York. Yeah. Maybe it's because uh, that's where the people, uh, I don't know, um, maybe that's where Ellis Island is or something. I don't know what it is. I, I, I'll tell you, if I was uh, just going on a bombing raid, uh, random, uh, England and New York would be my first two targets. Come on. Forget about those Iraq. Are of, those are two of my favorite places on earth, honest to God. Oh, the, the places are fine. It's just <laughs> everyone who lives there. No, come on. It I really know. is. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. come oh, no, on. No. Oh, but you, you have damn never, those you, New Yorkers. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. Oh, please. Uh, you, listen, you have not spent any real time. People there. from New York thinks, uh, think, listen, I'm from New York. That gives me a license to be an a-hole, and everyone will forgive me because I'm from New York. And, and no, people I from England do that a lot, too. It's because they're, they're crammed into such tiny spaces. They learn to be a-holes. All right. To well, survive. Well, whatever it is. Dr. Drew. <laughs> Dr. Drew. It's really a, a beam me up, Shirley. Yeah. All right. Uh, Anthony. Hi. Hey, you're 19. Great. <laughs> We're excited. Hey, when are you going to be 20? Oh, I just turned 19. All right, we'll send you out a mug. Thanks. All right, what's up? Well, um, I had a kind of a strange question for uh, Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend and I were in her car. We were kind of talking, driving home from, like, school. And uh, and we started talking about blue balls for some reason. I can't remember why. <laughs> Who was this with? His girlfriend. My girlfriend. Oh, all right. Hey, I wonder what was behind that conversation. I wish I could remember. <laughs> uh, you don't remember because your your balls were pulling the strings. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you were like uh, 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 Charlie McCarthy. The balls were uh, Edgar Bergen. Uh, I mean, uh, they were definitely doing all the talking. Yeah. And so what's the point of your question? Well, um, she had talked to a doctor, and she had said that he had told her that it was psychosomatic. And I just couldn't believe that. Well, and it's psychophysiologic, really. It's that is that your brain and it, the stimulation, it's it, this barrage it's receiving causes a lot of congestion of blood and uh, uh, you know it, there's what's called pelvic congestion develops and it can be very uncomfortable for males. It, it it doesn't necessarily have to be painful, and certainly men sort of overuse it as an excuse for why they have to get their way, but it is not psychosomatic. It, 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 when it when it happens, it is psychophysiologic. It happens because of the stimulation you're getting. Is this because you have the stimulation without the payoff? Uh, actually, I, I think that was probably part of the conversation. Uh, let me tell you something, Anthony. This isn't any different than any other physiological process that you begin and then it never comes to fruition. The body is not meant for that. I mean, when the body thinks it has to sneeze, it, it really needs to sneeze. If, if you hold your nose when you're about to sneeze, you're gonna, your ear will go shooting off across the room. 
And, you know, when you got to pee, you got to pee. If you grab the end of your penis at the last second, your, your prostate's going to go shooting off where your ear was. It's not coming out of the same hole either. Yeah. And it's the same with number two and uh, vomiting, everything. And so when it's time to go, it's time to go. Well, yeah, the, but the, I'm not disputing that. It's just that, uh, you know, she... It's not she psychosomatic. That, it is yeah. not psychosomatic. But, but what she is telling you, and which is truly the case, the men use it as an excuse or a way of manipulating females sometimes. There really should be a time. That's, I, I can see that, that people you know what I'm saying? Excuse, but I, the, the conversation wasn't that I was using it as an excuse. It is a real thing, Anthony, when it happens. You've had it, yes? Yeah. Okay, when it happens, it happens. <laughs> Hold on, let me write that down. I don't know what the timeline is. You know what I mean? Any guy who claims blue balls under 20 minutes is lying. Yeah. But when you start approaching 45 minutes an hour, that is a legitimate medical condition. <laughs> I guarantee it. I, I, it really is. I, I don't know what the timeline is, Drew. I would really, and I know it varies from guy to guy, but right. I would like to find an average for like an, for a 21-year-old. Mm -hmm. When the stimulation begins, how much uh, production is there, what is changing physiologically, and how long does it take before we can legitimately claim uh, there is a uh, traffic jam in the urethra? Now, that's basically what it is. Yeah, it is sure a bottleneck. There's, there's a research grant out there for that for, that for you. Well, Lord knows they, they they you know they spend two million dollars studying dung beetles. They could uh, f flow fifteen hundred over to me. I'll do a quick test. I'll pull some guys off the street. I'll work it out. Don't worry about the lab. <laughs> Kathy. Hi. Hey. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm on. Yay. I love you guys. I've been listening to you for a long time. Love and you, baby. All right. How come you guys don't have a guest tonight that I finally get through? How come I just get stuck with you, though? Oh, all right. Well, don't hang up on her. All right. oh, I don't please, push. Please don't. Okay. But don't okay, get smart. I promise. Okay. All right. Um, I guess I got a little gambling for you to do. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> I got a wallet uh, full of singles. It's burning a hole in my cheek, Drew. I just got my 100% my uh, profit from last night. 100% profit? Yeah, Drew Turner had a big night last night. Okay. Um, it's kind of a, a long story, and I'm going to make it as quick as I can. I've known this guy for a couple years now, uh -huh. and we were just friends, good friends, hung out a lot, worked together, and I guess about six months or so, my feelings for him started to change, which I kind of kept to myself. I talked to one of my girlfriends about it, mm -hmm. and right, uh, right before the holidays, we were hanging out one night, got drunk, and started fooling around, and then after that, he like totally shut down for me and of course I thought it was because something had happened between us well then the story finally comes out that he'd within a week of fooling around with me fooled around with his best friend who's also male uh huh and he um alright hold on, yeah, here's, hold the, on. <laughs> here's the gambling here's no, the no, new no, bet no, we, we, will we, Kathy finish your effing question before the 11 o'clock hour no here, right. here, here a couple questions so what, what is your history with relationships prior to this fellow um married divorced Dated, um, not not terribly successful with relationships. Yes. No, no. Have you been? Really. Have you hung out with gay guys before? Uh huh. You have. Were you sort of preoccupied with that at one time? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hold on. Well, time to bed. All right, but wait. Hold on. No. Sorry. <laughs> Let me tell you. This is like the track. Uh, two minutes to post. <laughs> is that what they call it? I don't know. What is it? Don't you go the? I guess, I've been like twice in my life. It's uh, you know, they give you the call over the PA. Two minutes to post. And then uh, you got to get your bets in because ah. the window closes. I see. Obviously, there's no gambling once the race begins. Mm. All right. Obviously. All right. The window is closed. Go, Drew. Um. Oh no! Wait, I'm going. All right. Domineering mother. Oh no! Wait, this doesn't work on girls. No. All different. right, you go. Go. Dad uh, disappeared. It may be even a decent relationship with dad, but he uh, vanished, gone, totally unavailable. Mm -hmm. In some way, he may he may not be absolutely physically gone, but it just became became for some reason unavailable. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I mean it's alcohol and stuff like that can do that, but I think it's something more like you're talking Devil's Triangle. You're not. Uh, I don't think he died or he went and just established another family somewhere or something. He's just gone. Okay, uh, I'm going. Well, no, I'm going to go. Dad stayed around, but never gave her the time of day. Okay, all right, that's a good one. That's easy enough. What the hell line was she on? Kathy. Yeah, that's both BS. What? Both of those are wrong. Oh, okay. What's the deal? Um, 
Me? I mean, I could I could give you a litany of, of things that happened to me growing up, um, all of which you've heard before. But this guy swears he's not no, gay. No, no, no. Stop. We just we need, we need to hear. Where's it. Papa? My Papa? Yeah. Um, he's fine. He's remarried. I have a little brother. I mean, I get along with him really well. Uh -huh. How old were you when Dad left? Four. Okay. All right. That's Dad not being around. Did he come, hold on, Drew. Put the money back. Let me just finish my question. Did he come back and abuse you on weekends? Um, no, my stepdad did, though. I should have went to... Se what kind of abuse? Sexual. Oh, the one time I don't go for the sexual <laughs> abuse. Please, you know, we're going to have to work... Uh, here's what I want to do. Oh, I could kill myself. Trump's so disappointed in me. And, uh, well, wait a minute. Do you, got, you get that money, Drew? <laughs> All right, hold on. Kathy. Yeah. So, uh, the blood father, your real dad... Good guy. Good guy. Set up another family. Like not distant or anything. He just he just abandoned you. Yes. Yeah. And not abusive. Right. Oh, that's a form of abuse. Abandonment, Drew. The worst form. All right. Try, damn it, Drew. You're going to bust me. I swear to God, i got to write this off. And listen, I want to do something with it. Here's what I want to do. You ever see those gambling movies where they have the, uh, the tell or the show or whatever they call it? They work out a little system, like in the beginning, a Goldfinger. What? Here's what I want. No, Drew, you don't need to know about this, but here's what I want from the Love Line listeners. I'll tell you what. i got to start winning some money back. <laughs> here's what we'll do. One cough means sexual abuse. No, come on. Just, no, seriously. No, 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 forget it. Uh, it's no fun, then. Just because the callers know the code. <laughs> come on, Kathy, what's your question? Clearing now? your throat would mean alcoholism. No, no, no. Come no. on, i got to get some you, of well, this you, money back. Then you, then you start listening to the patterns of people. Oh, you voice. didn't go for sexual abuse by the stepfather I, either. But but her being having been abandoned at four makes her a good target no. for a victimization. Okay. So. All right. Kathy, we're very sorry. Okay. And again, I blame your mother for bringing this predator into the nest. Well, I mean, I've been through therapy for years and have dealt with all my abuse. And All right. Well, here's what's going on. I think you're attracted to gay men because uh, men are very threatening to they're, you. They're not a, well, they're, you, the, it's best to go for the ones that are truly unavailable because you don't have to be vulnerable and go through the loss again. And there's no man unavailable like a gay man. Right. He says he's not. Well, He hasn't seen this guy since. Since when? Since uh, last week when he had sex months? with him. Two months? He hasn't seen this guy since. Let me tell you, the uh, the taste of a strange penis in one's mouth takes much longer than two months to wash clean. Is, is that some kind of uh, proverb? Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, can, uh, um, Will Rogers once him. said, uh, yeah. all right, listen, Kathy. I mean, I could tell you what what's wrong with him and... And then you could think that we were just a match made in hell. All right, but l listen, <laughs> Kathy, we got to go to break. So let me just uh, sum this up for a second. Wait, 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 no, wait a minute. What, what, is you, what are you looking for from us? I don't know. I you, guess I want to... He's telling me he's not gay, and I'm wondering if he is. <laughs> well, well the, Drew, uh, the show's officially begun with the banging of the mic. Okay. All right, Kathy. Uh -huh. He is at least bisexual. He, he really good. is. And, and at best, he's just really confused, Okay. Uh, look forward to more experimentation sexually. And confusion and chaos. And ambivalence. Yeah. And you have enough of that in your life. Yeah. And I know you seek that out because of the horrible confusion and uh, pain and um, the tragedy of your, of your childhood and this evil stepfather. But don't seek it in other men. It, Take it, a little time out. It just seems to me how much some of this stuff gets hardwired in very young if, if they're abused badly. And, uh, you know, she's okay with it and she's functioning well because she's had all the therapy. But these tendencies remain hardwired. Yes. She has to be hyper vigilant and alert and, uh, and uh, be aware of what she's doing to herself in her relationships. Yes. It, what Drew is saying, it is not like... Um it is not like, uh, well, it's, it's, it's the paint we put on top of the fabric. It is the fabric. It is the yarn. You, you cannot just wash it out. It is the actual substance. The substance yeah. of the person. It is in grain. It is in the fiber and in the muscle. All right, I'm going to pee. Hello. Why don't you try rapping at this time? Yo, yo, kick some flavor and stuff in love and line. I'll be right back in a minute. I'm sorry, that was really bad. You're just not street like me. <laughs> Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-5555. 
4455. I'm Adam Carolla. That is the. Uh, that was him. Board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist, and thrill seeker. You remember that show? No. Chuck Connors would. Uh, never saw that show. No. Oh, this is a great show. From the seventies, Chuck Connors used to host this Wait, thing. Th- those are non; th- those two terms don't go together. I know. Great but show, seventies. No, this was brilliant. Chuck Connors would say, uh, uh, "Thrill seekers, they're a certain breed of cat. They not only look danger in the eye, they seek it out and lick it." Which was um, infinitely amusing to uh, my 12-year-old brain. Oxymoron. All right. Uh, hey, uh, look who we have calling here. <laughs> Hello. Chris? Yes. How old are you? 25. All right. <laughs> Chris Hardwick, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, the... I'm really doing a lot tonight, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I have time to hold on the phone for 112 minutes and give me some... Give oh, me... please kiss my ass. You've been on hold for two minutes, for Christ's okay, sake. Okay, two minutes. Who gave you the hotline number anyway? I took it from the program director. All right. Office, along All right. with some pictures of his assistant. Hold on. Uh, and uh, mental note. Let's have that. Okay. By the way, Chris... Uh, Spell out who this is, first of all. This is uh, none other than Chris Hardwick, the host of the hugely successful MTV Singled Out program, now on its uh, 16th season. (laughs) Also, uh, he sits in for me on the rare occasion that I'm not here. Which is very rare. It really is. Uh, I'm telling you, if you had a medical degree, I'd see you twice a week. Which, and you know, and I, I said it for you when you went and got drunk at the, uh, at the Video Music Awards. I stayed behind. Yes. And, and hosted. How ironic. I know. Can you believe that? But you did come on the television program when you did broadly. Oh, are we allowed to mention that now? Inflatable sheep. Oh, which that's still right. Adorns the Adam's screw dr- you. Yeah, you still. I heard you still have the screw it, you. It, it yes. It adorns his dressing room. Uh, uh, Chris came bearing gifts. Uh, it was the subtle. It was the subtle uh, nuance of the of the the birthmark on the on the sheep's uh, muzzle that I think really really made it real. He brought in an inflatable uh, sheep. It's called the Screw You, and it actually has an orifice in in the back, oh. which a man can pleasure himself. And uh, let me tell you something. Don't go into that orifice. And the funniest thing to me was the box that it came in, because it actually explained to you why it was better than, not a woman, but better than a real sheep. <laughs> like, like no annoying bleeding to annoy the neighbors, and, oh. and none of the, you know, no mess. Like, I don't know. It's... I shouldn't have done it, but I, I was in a strange... Chris, why are you calling us? I'm calling because you were talking about the, the adhesive condom thing. Yes. And, uh, and, and they do actually exist. Uh, I, I myself have never used them, uh, but uh, I know that uh, there's a store on Melrose. I can't remember the name of it, but I know that this guy was demonstrating this space-age condom technique on a, on a, on a water bottle. Huh. And there's an adhesive strip around the inside that goes just underneath the base of the... Mushroom cloud and sort of, you know. Oh, you mean the, the adhesive strip goes way down on that end? Well, it's. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed herein are certainly opinions, that's for sure. If you'd like a written transcript of today's program, you probably should have written it down yourself. And if you did, we'd like a copy. Loveline producer Ann Wilkins. This broadcast was copyright 1997 Westwood One Entertainment. This music is MXPX on Tooth and Nail Records. Sit, Obo. Obo, stop dragging your butt across the carpet. <laughs>